In this episode, I want to introduce the uh, idea of a premise-free proof. This is one application of the conditional proof and indirect proof rules that's, that's quite interesting. A premise-free proof is a proof that doesn't have any premises, uh, hence the name. Uh, here's an example of a premise-free proof. I'm going to prove the following formula. It's a bracketed uh, A horseshoe B and A horseshoe B. This is a single formula and that's what I'm going to prove. And I'm going to prove it without, without using any premises at all. My first step is going to be an application of the conditional proof rule. Conditional proof says anywhere in a proof, even at the beginning, I can indent, draw a line marking my indentation off, and I can assume anything I want. I'm going to assume the antecedent of this conditional, because this is a conditional, its main connective is a horseshoe, and that suggests that I'm going to try a conditional proof. So the antecedent starts here and goes to there, so I'm going to assume, as my assumed premise, A horseshoe B and A. And I'll write AP for assumed premise. I'm allowed to do that by conditional proof. Now, I don't have any premises to work with. I've just got an assumption, an assumed premise that will be discharged, told to go away. So assuming, uh, or starting with my assumed premise, I'm going to apply the simplification rule. So that's simplification on line one. I'm going to apply simplification again to line one and bring down, so I brought down the A horseshoe B, now I'm brought down the A by applying simplification, but that's the modus ponens pattern. And so by modus ponens I can infer B. Modus ponens applied to two and three in my indented subproof. But look what I've done. Without using any premises at all, I've assumed this, a, a horseshoe B and A. I've reached this. Conditional proof says if you assume P and reach Q, you may disindent and assert P horseshoe Q. And so, one, two, three. So my fifth line, I'm going to disindent and I'm going to write the uh, assumed premise. A, horseshoe B, and A. That's my assumed premise. And then I'm going to horseshoe that to the, the last step in the indent, the B. And I'm going to cite conditional proof, lines 1 through 4. I've now discharged my premise, my assumed premise, and I'm back under the, well, I'm just back over here. So what I've done is I've proven this formula using the rules of inference without using any premise, premises. This is called a premise-free proof. Now, any formula that can be derived through a premise-free proof without using any premises at all, and you'll use either conditional or indirect proof or a combination when you do one of these premise-free proofs, any formula derived in this way has to be a tautology. And that's because you can think it through in kind of an intuitive way. Uh, intuitively, we've proven that this is true without using any premises at all. So we could start writing any premises we wanted up here, and this would logically follow no matter what premises we wrote up there because our rules of inference are all valid rules. And so given any premises at all, we can derive this as being true. And therefore, this is true no matter what premises are true. Therefore, this is true no matter what is true. Therefore, it's true under all circumstances. Therefore, it's a tautology. So any formula derived using an indirect, using, excuse me, using a premise-free proof has to be a tautology if you think it through in that way. We call a statement derived through an indirect, through a premise-free proof, we call such a statement a theorem of our system. The theorem of our natural deduction system. 
So that formula then is a theorem of our system because we derived it using a premise-free proof. So now putting all this together, since anything derived by a premise-free proof must be a tautology, and anything derived by a premise-free proof is called a theorem, and if you grant me that any theorem of our system can be proven using a premise-free proof, that's what we define as a theorem, anything that can be proven using a premise-free proof, it follows that um, every theorem in our system is a tautology. It can also be proven that every tautology is a theorem in our system, if you go into some advanced applications of logic. But that's a premise-free proof, and uh, Again, you know, practice them from the text, uh, from the, the course materials. The more you do, the better you get. Thank you for your time.